Hey everyone, it's me, Lone, back again with another Fallout 76 video. It's been a while, I know, I feel like I keep saying that at the beginning of most videos, but it is for good reason. As some of you might know, I've been suffering from some chronic back and shoulder blade pain for a while now, and it's gotten to the stage where it's really affected my ability to produce videos and also work. I've actually taken some time off from work at Bethesda to just concentrate on this with stretches and exercising and whatnot. So that's why I have been able to upload many videos recently but today I was feeling a little bit better and I thought I should get a video up because it had been so long so bear with me I'm really sorry but with that out of the way let's get to the topic of today's video and that's going to be about the bloodied sneak commando builds in Fallout 76. Usually when you ask hardcore and very experienced players of the game in terms of what the best damage dealing uh, build in the game is Usually the answer of Bloody Sneak Commando build is going to be brought up and that's for good reason. This is a very, very effective build in terms of just pure damage dealing in Fallout 76. It has other benefits as well, of course, and I would argue it's one of, if not the best builds in terms of damage dealing. And with locked and loaded and special loadouts becoming a thing now, there's a lot of different builds that I think people are experimenting with. And if you haven't tried a Bloody Sneak Commando build, I encourage you to do so. And in this video, I'm going to go through my version of a Bloody Sneak Commando build and give you some different options in terms of perk cards and mutations and whatnot. So if you enjoy this video, if it helps you, please like, I would really appreciate it it subscribe if you're new but with all that out of the way let's get to the topic of the video okay so we are here at west tech to showcase to you my bloody sneak commando build against some relatively high enemies these super mutants are like level 50 but inside we'll get some level 75s and 100s to give it a good run um, this build is also very effective of course against boss monsters like the scorch beast queen or earl williams as part of colossal problem the whole point of it is you stay sneaked you get the increased damage from being sneak and also you target the head to get even more uh, critical damage uh, in VAT. So very, very effective build. I'm currently using the Fixer, but you can also use a Bloodied Handmaid as well, which is probably easier to come by, but the Fixer is arguably better when it comes to this build and, and dishing out as much damage as possible. But either are going to be good for you. So let's run through these Super Mutants. I'm going to be targeting their head, of course, um, and I don't have any additional sneak boosting items either. I just have my per cards and my fully, you know, unyielding build or armor, I should say. So I, I think I'm going to stay hidden or in, you know, in, in caution for most of this. I'm not actually too worried, but let's see how we go. So this guy here, let's kill him. doesn't take long. I also have Gunfu on. So if I can get the timing right, I should, you know, swap between different sub mutants, but let's get this guy here. Uh, so he knows someone's there, but he doesn't actually know where I am. Uh, this guy's going as well. So as you can see, I'm not even doing, doing crit damage. I keep forgetting to do crit damage. I will do some crit damage. And as you can see, that was Gunfu in action, um, swapping between the enemies and there again. So this build is insane. It's very, very effective. Um, very, very uh, high damage dealing. And let's get inside because that's where the real test is going to be. These guys being level 50, you know, you can kill enemies this quickly with a lot of different guns in the game. So it's not exactly showcasing its highest potential but let's get rid of that turret and we'll go inside um again this build the reason why i like it so much is because if you ever want to solo the you know the scorch beast queen run you can actually do it with this build it's insanely um effective against those kind of enemies as i mentioned before but let's uh, continue killing some enemies here. As you notice, I never got out of sneak either. And I'm not using a stealth boy. I'm not using any armor with, you know, sneaking bonus. So you don't absolutely need them. You don't. Um, in fact, I recommend sticking with an unyielding build to get the experience boost. Uh, so let's kill this guy. We'll use a crit. Where else? Level 60. So they're still all dying very quickly. Level 100 uh, mutant hound. So that one took a little bit quicker to die, but... Not much, to be honest. There's usually a guy here. I always do that. I always get off the head. Oh, that missed completely. Come on, 95%. <laughs> All right. Oh, was there someone there? Dude, that guy was really hidden in the corner there. I was like, is that is that a statue? Is that a mannequin? <laughs> no, it was a super mutant. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's very effective. Let me just clear out these enemies here. 
uh, as much as I can. That was a level 100 super mutant. Now, mind you, adrenaline is pumping right now, increasing my damage even more because I had gotten a number of kills. Um, so again, that's the, the increased benefit of this build. The more you get kills, the more effective it is in a single firefight. Uh, level 75, he's gone. So I could keep killing enemies. You know, I feel like I made my point. Gunfu is very effective when it swaps between enemies and gives you even more damage. Um, there's a level 100 uh, mutant hound. I keep calling them mounds because I'm an idiot, but I think we're, uh, we're done. And that was a torso shot, so that wasn't as long. Uh, let's get back to the head. Ah. You can also jump without going out of sneak, which is nice too. So yeah, very, very good build. I love it a lot. Should have turned on my flashlight. Anyways, <laughs> let's get to the actual build itself. We're going to go through the perk cards, the, the, you know, mutations, the weapon that I'm using, all that kind of stuff. So let's start off with the actual uh, perk cards themselves because those are definitely the most important. Now, before I get started, I need to mention I'm using three legendary special perk cards. So I have an extra 15, because they're maxed out, an extra 15 special points to use towards regular perk cards, which is why I'm able to have so many perk cards. So don't think you need all of these to have this build. I will tell you which perk cards are optional and which perk cards are absolutely necessary to have an optimized Bloody Sneak Commando build. So keep that all in mind. But let's start with strength, of course. Traveling pharmacy, pharmacy, it's optional. I use it because I can, because it's quality of life and I like relieving my carry weight a little bit, especially because as a bloodied build, carrying a lot of uh, stim packs, maybe not so much the sneak side, but when I use my heavy gun side, I use a lot of stim packs. So I like to have traveling pharmacy. I might as well, right? I got the extra points to do so. Same with sturdy frame to ensure that your armor weighs less than normal and also bandolier to make sure your ballistic weapon ammo weighs less than normal because, you know, a fixed sight and a handmade uses ballistic ammo and you want to carry a lot of it if it's going to be your main weapon if you don't want to have all these points in strength what i suggest that you do is simply have a single point in bandolier because you need to use one per card right so definitely use bandolier i reckon over these it depends what reduces your weight more if you find that your sturdy frame for instance because your armor weighs a lot if you find that reduces your carry weight more, then you use standard, uh, a sturdy frame. If you find bandolier reduces your weight more, use bandolier, whichever one is best for you. You can use strong back as well, but I don't think that's as effective as perk cards that reduce the, the weight of items that you carry in bulk, like stim packs and ammo and whatnot. So that's strength. That's not where the magic is. The magic is, a lot of it is in perception, in fact, and agility. So perception, master commando, um, oh, it's all out of order. Uh, let me let me do one of these bad boys so we're actually following it in order. So all the commando perk cards, master commando, commando, and expert commando, those are improving your damage by plus 20% each. It's not quite that because the way damage is calculated now in the game, it's, you know, additive instead of multiplicative. Multiplicative. I cannot talk tonight. Multiplicative is the word I was thinking about. Anyways, it's not quite 20%, but they're still very effective if you want to increase your, your DPS as high as possible and to be max. And if you're going to use a Bloody Sneak Commando build, you might as well do that. I would say Master Commando, Commando, and Expert Commando, three max out for all of them, equip it. You'll thank me later. I still think they're very effective. The next one I got here is Concentrated Fire, because in a Bloody Sneak Commando build, you want to be using that a lot, to be honest, and Concentrated Fire allows you to target limbs, specifically the head and then you get high accuracy and, and damage per shot so definitely have concentrated fire definitely max it out and you need to be using vats in this sneak build and the next up is tank killer so tank killer means that your rifles and also pistols uh, ignore 36 percent of armor and have a nine percent chance to stagger at max rank really it's the anti-armor effect that you're looking for here because that's incredibly useful in fallout 76 whether it's the legendary effect or this perk card for rifles you really want to have tank killer uh, so i've got a couple of other options here but to be honest those are the main ones that you should be looking out for the other options are ground pounder so if for whatever reason if you're not using vats and you want to have a faster uh, reload speed and also better hip fire accuracy then you have ground pounder you would probably swap out concentrated fire for ground pounder because tank killer is very very important um, and if you're not using vats then you don't need concentrated fire but i would suggest um, using vats and sneak and concentrated fire is better in that regard because you can focus on the head and get more damage also as well long shot if you want to use it, you can, uh, when you aim down the site, you have more range and more accuracy, but I don't use this. I don't even have it maxed out, to be honest, but for whatever reason, if you want to aim down the site, down the site more and not use VATS, swap out Concentrated Fire for maxed out long shot, but 
that's one that I don't don't use that often at all. Um, so yeah. Let's move on to Endurance. Some more optional ones here. I have Life Giver at 4. Now, when you're a sneak build, and if you're good enough at it, and you know if you're clever, you're not going to get hit, pretty much. So, Life Giver, for some people, is completely unnecessary in this kind of build. And I would agree. Again, I just have it because I can. Um, so, I have Life Giver at 4. You don't need it. What, what I would probably suggest is just have a single point in Endurance and have Radical, because Radical gives you extra carry weight um, because you have so much strength with an unyielding build which is really really nice to have some of the options that i use like fireproof but again are you getting hit by fire that much maybe in colossal problem but there are armor mods that can do a better job at that so another option that i have i might swap out these two and go fireproof and rejuvenated i like rejuvenated because the benefits that it gives you it includes h more hp which again is not so effective when you're sneaky but it improves your ap regen even more so that's actually really good if you don't want to have Radical, the probably the more effective, uh, you know, uh, single point in Endurance to have is a single point in, in Rejuvenated and making sure that you're fully fed and you're fully hydrated. So that's what I'd probably do if I was not me with, with these legendary perk cards. But since I have the points to spare, I will do that and Radical. Maybe one day I'll swap out Radical for a single point in uh, Rejuvenated. But for now, I just want the increased carry weight. So let's move on. Uh, anything else there? No, let's move on to Charisma. So Charisma, I have three in, in, inspirational. Again, not necessary, but if you want to rank up your legendary perk cards as fast as possible, you want to get more XP. So I actually do recommend inspirational for most people and playing a team for sure. Stranger Numbers is probably the, the main one that you want here. So Stranger Numbers, it improves the positive mutation effects that you have by 25%. If your teammates are mutated too, and I do recommend that you play in a team, especially with this build, of course. Playing in a team generally is just better in this game. Um, so for sure, Stranger Numbers have this. But what I actually would recommend is at least having Charisma in f at 4 having Stranger Numbers, and then Tenderizer maxed out at 3, because Tenderizer increases your damage by a significant amount, especially against those boss monsters where you're constantly shooting at them. So you make your target receive 10% more damage for 10 seconds after you attack. You're not experiencing this as much against lower level mobs and, you know, sub mutants like I was killing so quickly anyways, you don't really notice it. But again, against the Scorch Beast Queen, Earl Williams or whatever, you will notarize, uh, notice Tenderizer, notarizer, you will notice Tenderizer, has a really good effect and damage dealing against those kind of enemies. So for sure, if you can spare it, have Tenderizer. If you can't, just have a single point with Stranger Numbers. And then Suppressor, I just have it there, but I don't really use it that often, so I'm not going to talk about it. Nerd Rage is fundamental for a bloodied build, so when you're below 20% health, you gain 40 damage resist, 20% damage, and 15% uh, AP regen. The damage boost and the AP regen for, for uh, VATS is really why you want Nerd Rage. It's a fundamental one for this build, so definitely have it. Now, Gunsmith. Technically, this is optional, but I think Gunsmith is fairly important because what it does is it ensures that your guns break 50% slower. And when you're using a fixer or a handmade and you're constantly shooting out of it and it's your main weapon, let's say that's the only bloody commando gun that you have, you're going to be finding yourself repairing that gun a lot. So I would recommend having some level of gunsmith. And when you improve your intelligence to get more to get gunsmith, you're also improving your XP gains in the game. So for sure, Nerd Rage and Gunsmith, I would recommend, but technically you could just go with Nerd Rage here. Um, and I have another option, batteries included, but you know, I don't really use that with this build. So let's get to agility. This is the next most important uh, special attribute when it comes to a bloody snake commando. So you've got a uh, covert operative. Your ranged sneak attacks deal 2.5 times normal damage. Fundamental, you need this. You also need sneak. You are 75% harder to detect while sneaking. That's why I never got out of sneak when I was, you know, walking right up to these super mutants. It was really effective. Escape artist, you sneak to lose enemies and running no longer affects stealth. Really, really effective for a sneak build, especially if you're like, you know, f fighting Earl Williams as part of Colossal Problem. And for whatever reason, you do get out of sneak just sneak to lose and come back and then you're back in sneak. It's really good to have escape artist. Gunfu is what I was showcasing before. Essentially, your VAT swaps between your targets on a kill and you get an increasing amount of damage uh, to your next three targets, as you can see the numbers there. So plus 10, 20, and then 30%. Gunfu, I used to underestimate this perk card so much until I started using a sneak, sneak build where you can kind of pick off targets and swap between them, you know, really easily. So for sure, if you can spare it, I would have Gunfu. Not absolutely necessary, but I would say it's more important than the others that I mentioned. 
And then Adrenaline, I still think this is one of the most important perk cards that you can have, even though, again, the way damage is calculated in the game is different and not as effective anymore. I would still say Adrenaline is super, super important. So you gain plus 10% with a max 60% damage for 30 seconds per kill and duration refreshes with kills. You need this card. Like, again, if you want to get the highest DPS as possible and you're fighting a lot of mobs, you will find Adrenaline really helps you in the game. So for sure, have Adrenaline if you can. There are another uh, a number of options here that I'll mention. So Mr. St Sandman, if it is nighttime, at night your silence weapons do an additional 50% sneak attack damage. So if you have a fixer, for instance, which is silence, um, you do even more damage at night. But you can't using it, use it in the daytime. I like having a build that's effective no matter when, but let's say it was daytime. Maybe what I would do is get rid of Gunfu for that period and have Mr. Sandman and maybe another point in White Knight just to make my armor break slowly, even though that's not even as good. Maybe Marathoner. You see, like, you know, I don't think anything is as good to replace with, with Gunfu, but if there was anything at nighttime, at least have Mr. Sandman. Um, Again, White Knight, because you're not getting your armor shot that much in a sneak build. Having it, you know, get damaged slower isn't that effective, so I don't really use that that often. Uh, what else do I have here? Action Boy and Girl. In fact, actually, you know what? If you weren't going to use Gunfu and you were using a lot of VATs, Action Boy is, or Girl is not a bad choice. So it means your AP regenerates 45% faster when it's maxed out, and that's going to let you use VATs even more. So for sure, if you're not finding benefit with Gunfu, if it doesn't proc for you, just depending on how you play the game, and if you're only targeting one enemy at a time, for instance, then definitely swap out Gunfu for Action Boy. If you have armor that boosts your AP regen already, like I do, then you don't need Action Boy, which is why I don't use Action Boy, and I have Gunfu instead, just to get that increased damage. And then technically, there's another one, another one called Secret Agent. Secret Agent specifically makes your Stealth Boys last four times as long when it's maxed out. As you saw, though, I don't get out of, st uh, out of Stealth or Sneak, even without any, you know, armor boosting sneaking. Um, if you have this Sneak per card maxed out, you're totally fine, and you don't even need a, a Stealth Boy. If you do want it, and you don't want to use Gunfu, for sure, have Secret Agent maxed out, and utilize those Stealth Boys, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary. In some situations, again, it might be, but I don't think it's that important. So let's get to Luck. This is probably pretty important as well. So Bloody Mess, to get the highest DPS possible, 15% bonus damage, um, for sure, have that with this build. Next up, we have Better Criticals. So you're doing a lot of Vats Criticals, as you can see, to get get most damage so your vats criticals now do plus 40 percent damage when it's maxed out for sure have this serendipity technically it's not needed again this is technically optional because you're not getting hit that much um when you're a sneak build especially if you play it right but if you for whatever reason get out of sneak serendipity can help like i like serendipity just to have it because i have the points to spare but technically it is optional class freak look i would actually say um if you don't have the points to spare, maybe don't have Serendipity and max out Class Freak because this reduces the negative effects of your, mut your mutations. 25% at one star, but I believe it's 75% when it's maxed out. And you know how many negative effects mutations have to your special attributes and whatnot. So for sure, I would actually say a maxed out Class Freak might be better for some people um, than Serendipity. So have a think about Class Freak in this situation. But for me, I just have it at one. Starch Genes is absolutely important because you want to keep your mutations and not gain any new ones. So have maxed out Starch Genes. And then Critical Savvy. This essentially ensures, with a few other things, uh, that you can get a critical shot every two shots. So critical hits now only consume 55% of your critical meter when it's maxed out. And then when you have your luck at 33, which is what I have, then every second shot essentially becomes a critical and you can use criticals all the time in VATS. It is freaking awesome and amazing. So for sure, have critical savvy. My boy Tier has done a great video to show you how you can ensure every second shot in VATS is a critical. But TLDR, critical savvy, 33 luck. That's what you need. Some other options that you can have are Quick Hands, Tormentor, and Grim Reaper's Sprint, but I don't really use them, to be honest. Um, this is pretty much my luck build for sure. So those are the perk cards. Uh, we're going to actually move down now to the legendary perk cards. I have some um, notes here, so don't mind me. Now, legendary perk cards, 
for short. By the way, could you see those as I was going through them? Was my camera in the way? It was not. Look at that. Legendary perk cards. Uh, these are definitely more optional, right? There's only one absolutely necessary legendary perk card for a bloody sneak commando build, and that is follow through. So follow through means your range sneak damage increases... Uh, Sorry, your range sneak damage increases damage to target uh, by 40% for 10 seconds when it's maxed out. If you're focusing on a sneak build, you need to max out follow through first, for sure. Everything else is just totally optional. So again, I have all the legendary special perk cards because I like it um, and it gives me more special points for the more quality of life, you know, carry weight perk cards, stuff like that. Ammo factory, I have because I like producing more ammo when I need it. Taking one for the team, technically, you, you don't want to get hit and sneak, right? So it's not really proccing that often. I have it because when I swap to my heavy gunner build, I like to use, excuse me, I like to have taking one for the team to increase damage to targets. But yeah, not that important. Like really, it is follow through is the main one that you want. Um, but I will say for sure, the legendary special perk cards are great. You should be using them if you are unsure what other legendary perk cards you should be using. So I mentioned follow through, I mentioned the legendary special. Let's mention weapons. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm using a bloodied fixer. I will show you my gun right now. Uh, where is it? It's under the fixer. I keep thinking it's under bloodied. So this is the goddess of all god rolls. <laughs> uh, Serger 301. I promised him that I would shout out his name on Reddit. He was the one that provided me with this. This is the B2525 Fixer. It is the best damage dealing gun in the game. Again, legit and non-legacy uh, for sure, especially when it's paired with a bloody sneak commando build. So you get the bloodied effect, you get the improved stealth effect, you get the 25% faster fire rate and 25% less VATS, VATS AP cost. It is absolutely amazing when you pair it with a sneak commando build and and bloodied of course and you're using bats a lot this is essentially what you want to aim towards but you don't need this to have a very effective uh bloodied sneak commando build at all this is like just i'm letting you know this is what essentially you want to aim towards but all you need for sure is just a single star bloodied handmade or fixer that's all you need for this build you don't need to aim towards this don't tell people let people tell you otherwise if you have it great if you have uh, let me show you some other legendary effects that are really good as well so bloodied of course is the main one that you want to have this uh build be optimized the second tier is definitely faster fire rate is the best but explosive is really good 50 percent critical shot damage is also very good and 33 percent bats hit chance op uh, are also good as well so any one of those four you're going to be very happy but of course faster fire rate is the best when it comes to this build it's the highest dps essentially the third tier the 25 percent less bats ap cost is the best but then you've got plus one agility to improve your strength uh, strength sneaking is also okay 15 percent faster critical fill is also okay and faster reload is also a good option as well especially with the fixer because you're reloading a lot but this 25% less uh, VAT AP cost is such a mouthful, um, is definitely the best. But those other options are also good as well. In terms of the armor, um, you know my armor. Let me swap to this screen, actually. You can see it a lot better. So I have a full set of unyielding Secret Service armor. Look, some people will say that maybe you can add a chameleon armor to help with your sneak, but you saw how well I was sneaking just with the sneak per card. I did not come out of, uh, out of sneak or, or stealth once, even with a full set of unyielding. So I think you can just have this and get all the other benefits that you get with an unyielding build, like more XP and more carry weight and all that kind of stuff. For sure, I would just say have a full set of unyielding. Now, the different modifiers... That's where it gets interesting when it comes to armor. So again, unyielding for the first tier, for the second tier. And a boost to agility is obviously good because it improves your stealth very, very slightly because the special attribute agility is tied to improved sneak. So having a plus one to agility is nice, but it's not absolutely necessary. I would still say the best second tier is the one that increases your AP refresh speed. Again, because you're using VATS a lot. So when you increase your AP faster, you're able to use VATS more. I, I would say that's better than agility, but if you, if you have plus one agility for your second attribute, that's also good as well. It's also technically helping you with this build. The third modifier is actually what I don't have, but the improved sneaking modifier for the third one is obviously one of the best when it comes to this build. But also, uh, what are the other ones? 
no, that that's pretty much it for the third tier, to be honest. Um, obviously, Sentinels and, and, and it's Cavaliers, the ones that essentially mean you have a chance to reduce damage when you're running or, or when you're standing still. But when you're in sneak build, you're not trying to take damage at all. Sometimes you get hit, of course, but I would say that the third tier isn't as important, but improved sneaking technically I would say is the best when it comes to optimizing your bloody sneak build. But I don't even have an improved sneaking, right? I have the reducing damage or sprinting one. I have less loom damage. So you saw I wasn't getting out of sneak even without it without that attribute. So you don't absolutely need it need it. If you are worried, maybe have one chameleon. But what I will say is that I would suggest getting that full set of unyielding, especially because it lets you get to that 33 luck, so you can get every second shot to be a critical. Technically, right now, I have 32, but once I join a team with another mutated teammate, I get to 33. So that's how I usually play, which is why I have it at that. Um, so those are my special spread. You don't really need to see that. But let's talk about mutations. So um, mutations are a funny one because especially when you're swapping between builds, you want to have mutations that aren't so negative, negative to some of your other builds that you want to use with special loadouts. But here are the ones that I have. Adrenal Reaction, Bird Bones, Eagle Eyes, Egghead, Empath, Herbivore, Herd Mentality, Marsupial, Scaly Skin, and Speed Demon. Now, some of these aren't absolutely necessary, so I got some notes here. Now, with Carnivore, you can either have Carnivore or, or Herbivore. Pick one if you eat meat more, you have Carnivore. If you eat veggies more, you have Herbivore. Doesn't matter which one. Scaly Skin is technically optional because what it does is, is it improves your energy resistance and your damage resistance, but it reduces your AP. And again, as I mentioned, AP is super inf important for VATS. So technically, Scaly Skin is optional, but I like to have it when I go to my Heavy Gunner build and I am getting hit a lot with energy uh, damage and just regular damage. So depending on, on how you play, if you just want to do the Sneak Commando build, don't, don't have scaly skin at all, but if you like to swap between builds, then have scaly skin. It doesn't really affect your bats, to be honest, uh, that much anyways. Now, if you play solo, you don't need herd mentality and you don't need empath, really. Um, but I wouldn't suggest you play solo, like play in a team. It's much better. Um, and then grounded. So if you never use energy weapons, like if you just stick with your fixer or your handmade, you can use grounded. Um, but I like to, again, swap between ballistic damage weapons and also energy weapons like a Gatling Plasma and all that kind of stuff. So for sure, um, use Grounded if you can, but I don't even think it's that important. Um, and that's probably it. I think that's it, right? That's, that's it. We're done. This was a pretty good recording. All right, let me get to the conclusion of this video. Alrighty way, Sanders, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If there's any way that I can clarify things in the comments, just put a question in the comments below. And until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer. Please take care of yourselves and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.